all-American pressure cooker canners, proudly made by the Wisconsin Aluminum Foundry, Manitowoc, Wisconsin, since 1930. Congratulations on your purchase of the most durable pressure cooker canner in the world, the All-American. The All-American was designed with durability in mind. Every cover and bottom is extra heavy, high-grade cast aluminum that is precision machined to give a polished appearance. With proper care and use, your All-American will last for many, many years to come. Before you begin canning, be sure to read the important safeguards on the inside cover of the manual and read the rest of the manual for other necessary information. The purpose of this video is to give a visual of the basics on how to use the All-American pressure cooker canner and is not intended to replace the instruction manual. The automatic pressure control consists of the round pressure regulator weight and the vent pipe. The vent pipe is attached to the cover and the pressure regulator weight fits on top of the vent pipe. The precision machined regulator weight has three different settings, 5, 10, and 15 pounds. If your recipe calls for 10 pounds, simply place the number 10 directly over the vent pipe. Please note that if you live above 1,000 feet elevation, set the regulator weight at 15 instead of 10. Check with your local county extension office if you are unsure of your elevation. Before cooking or canning anything, check that your vent pipe is clear by holding it up to the light. You should be able to see straight through the hole. If there is an obstruction, carefully insert a piece of wire or pipe cleaner in the vent pipe and run it gently in and out to be sure the hole is clear and unobstructed. Rinse with hot water. The overpressure plug is a safety device that will automatically vent steam if the vent pipe becomes clogged and too much pressure develops inside of the canner. When cooking or canning, you may experience slight leaking initially. This is okay. If you experience significant leakage beyond 5 pounds of pressure, the cause may be that the plug is dirty and needs to be cleaned, or the overpressure plug has become worn, cracked, or has hardened over time and needs to be replaced. To remove the overpressure plug, push from the top and pull from the bottom with your fingers. To insert a new plug, push the round top side of the overpressure plug into the opening from the underside of the cover. It helps to start the plug at an angle. When the overpressure plug is correctly in position, the indented portion will be visible when the underside is viewed. Be certain to check that the round top of the plug and the top lip are fully through the opening so that the top lip is not folded under. The top handle is designed to help remove the cover only. Use the side handle on the bottom to lift the entire unit when necessary. The aluminum side handles will get hot, so be sure to use protection when touching them. The cover is secured with large stay cool wing nuts. The threads of the wing nuts come pre-lubricated, but to keep the wing nuts turning easily, it is a good idea to periodically lubricate the clamp bolts. Completely unscrew the wing nut and place a small amount of petroleum jelly on the end of the clamp bolt. Screw the wing nut back onto the bolt. The cover of your pressure canner is designed to seal tightly without the use of a rubber gasket. The metal surfaces where the cover and canner meet are beveled to produce the exclusive metal-to-metal -metal seal. Before using your cooker each time, lubricate the metal-to-metal -metal seal with olive oil. If you don't have olive oil, you may also use petroleum jelly. Apply a thin film of lubricant to the edge inside the cooker bottom where the inside wall begins to bevel out at the top. Use just enough lubricant to wet the edge, but not enough to actually see it. Wash the unit after each use. When placing the cover onto the bottom, be sure to line up the arrow on the cover with the notch mark on the bottom. Some bottoms have an arrow on the bottom instead of a notch mark. Set the cover onto the bottom with the cover arrow about a half inch to the right of the notch mark on the bottom so the bayonet clamps do not hit the lugs. When the cover is seated, turn the cover clockwise to lock bayonet clamps into place. This will line up the cover arrow with the notch mark on the bottom. The cover will wobble slightly when placed on the bottom before the wing nuts are fully fastened. When the cover is properly seated, there is a small gap between the bottom and the cover. Be sure to keep this gap even around the whole bottom. In order to fasten the cover to the bottom, bring one set of opposite wing nuts up. Tighten them down simultaneously and at that point look to see if there is an even gap between the cover and bottom. 
If there isn't, tighten the side that's high and loosen the side that is low at the same time until the gap is even. The wing nuts will be snug while you are doing this. Do the same thing with the second set of wing nuts, making sure to keep the gap even between the cover and bottom. If the wing nut is too short to get over the cover, simply unscrew the wing nut counterclockwise until the wing nut fits over the cover. Depending on the model you have, there will be one or two sets of wing nuts left. Tighten the remaining set or sets. When complete, go around one more time to each wing nut and see if there is any more room for snugging them down. Hand tighten only, never use a wrench or other tool to tighten. If the cover is placed on incorrectly, steam will leak from between the seal and the canner will not get up to pressure. It is a good idea to do a test run before canning or cooking to become familiar with this process and to be sure you know how to tighten it without the cooker leaking. Place two or three inches of water in the unit, lubricate the metal to metal seal, tighten the cover down, put the canner on your burner and turn to high heat in order to bring the unit up to pressure with the weight on the 15 pound setting. Look for any leaking between the cover and bottom and make sure you get up to canning pressure. The easy to read dial gauge is supplied as a reference only for when the unit is pressurized and timing for canning may roughly begin, or when the pressure has dropped to zero and the lid may be safely removed. You can tell if your dial gauge is working by comparing it to the pressure regulator weight. If your dial gauge is within plus or minus two PSI of what you have the regulator weight set at when the weight jiggles, it is okay and doesn't need to be replaced. After most normal cooking, allow the unit to cool until the dial gauge reads zero. When canning, there are a couple of different ways to reduce the pressure. After canning in glass jars, turn heat off and permit cooker to cool gradually until the dial gauge drops to zero. Remove the pressure regulator weight with a hot pad and wait two minutes. When canning in tin cans, turn the heat off and release pressure as quickly as possible by removing the pressure regulator weight with a hot pad. Never loosen the wing nuts until the dial gauge reads zero and you have allowed any remaining pressure to escape by carefully removing the pressure regulator weight. After loosening the wing nuts, turn the cover slightly counterclockwise to release the bayonet clamps. Remove the cover by raising the farthest edge of the cover first to protect your face and arms from steam. Put two to three inches of water in the canner and place the rack on the bottom of canner lip side down. Place filled jars on the rack Use a jar lifter if the jars are too hot. The number of jars you can fit in your model canner is shown in the instruction book. The numbers are approximate as they are based on use of standard size mason jars. Fasten canner lids securely. Leave weight off vent pipe for now. Turn your burner to the highest setting until steam flows from the vent pipe. Continue venting for 10 minutes in order to get all of the air out. Maintain high heat setting and place regulator weight on the vent pipe using the number called out in the recipe. The canner will pressurize at this time. Start timing the process when the weighted gauge begins to jiggle or rock. The weight may appear like it is leaking, but this is normal condensation that is dripping down onto the hot cover. Regulate heat under the canner to maintain a steady pressure so that the weight only jiggles one to four times per minute. Quick and large pressure variations during processing may cause unnecessary liquid losses from jars. When the timed process is completed, turn off the heat and let the canner depressurize. Do not force cool the canner. Forced cooling may result in food spoilage. Cooling the canner with cold running water or removing the regulator weight before the canner is fully depressurized will cause loss of liquid from jars and seal failures. After the canner is depressurized, remove the regulator weight from the vent pipe. Wait two minutes, unfasten the lid, and remove it carefully. Lift the lid away from you so that the steam does not burn your face. Remove jars with a lifter and place on towel or cooling rack. 